Hey there, Central High School. This is your principal, Mr. Green. Welcome to our virtual orientation. This is for our 10th grade students and 10th grade families. I hope that you're able to get a lot of information today. Well, the one thing I've learned from yesterday's orientations with our upperclassmen is just how much information we're presenting. This presentation will take about 30 minutes, so make sure that you're dialed in. As you're going along, you can see the chat there uh, on the right-hand side of your screen. We have some of our administrative team answering your questions in real time. So make sure that you are being a good digital citizen and answering or asking great questions throughout this orientation process. Today, we want to cover several topics. Today, we're going to talk about who are some of the important people here at Central High School. We're going to hear from our librarian, Ms. Lane. We're going to talk about Google Classroom a little bit. We're going to talk about transition readiness. We'll discuss online parent forms. We're going to talk about our schedule. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to close out our time today with NTI expectations. Guys, here's the thing that I always talk about. Last year, you didn't get the, our sophomores, you didn't get a full freshman year last year in the building. But there's something that you heard me say a lot. And that is this. There are two types of students. There are central students and those who wish they were central students. I could not imagine being a student at any other high school because you all have the best teachers, the best administrators, and the best principal. Uh, that's going to help you get through this NTI 2.0 period. And so just think about that. Be, be thankful for the fact that you're at a great school. Your teachers have been working really hard for the last two weeks, preparing lessons that are engaging for you and that are meaningful, so that when we start back one week from today, you'll be ready to go with great learning opportunities and learning experiences. With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and call up our assistant principal so that they can introduce themselves to you. We have one new AP in the mix. Uh, but all four APs will introduce themselves to you at this time. What's going on, sophomores? Uh, my name is Mr. Founder, Coach Founder. Uh, I will be over sophomores this year. I will also have freshmen's uh, last name A through F. Hey, sophomores, it's Miss Edwards coming to you from the historic Central High School. I'm so glad to be a Yellow Jacket again. This year, I'm going to be in charge of testing and any um, advanced placement uh, classes. Can't wait to see you all in person again. But for now, hugs. Hey, sophomores, this is Miss Beaumont. I am this year going to be working with seniors again, and also I'm going to be working with freshmen, last names O through Z. So we look forward to seeing you all soon. Hey, sophomores, this is Miss Britt coming to you. I will have uh, juniors and freshmen G through N. Next up will be the counselors. Hi, um, sophomores, I'm Julie Brown. I'll be your sophomore counselor and I also have freshmen, A through F. I'm looking forward to working with each one of you. Sophomores, it's really good to see you. My name is Ben Robertson. I am the junior counselor this year. I've also got freshmen whose last names start with the letters G through N, Miss Four. Um, is not with us for orientation today, but she's our third counselor. She's going to be over the seniors this well this year, as well as freshmen with the last name starting with letters O through C. Um, we're also going to introduce some very important people uh, for you here today. <clears throat> We've got Miss Mack, who is our Frisky, or the Family Resource Youth Service Center Coordinator. So if you need her, she can be reached at alana.mack at jefferson.kyschools.us. Ms. Tansy Jones, who's the best mental health practitioner and one of the best people ever, um, is at Central again this year. So you can you can reach her at tansy.jones at jefferson.kyschools.us. Dr. Cynthia King, who you all know very well, is our magnet coordinator. Uh, she'll be on a lip, on a video in a little bit explaining transition readiness for you. And then I'm going to ask Ms. Lane to come up, Ms. Adrienne Lane, our librarian. 
Hello, I am Ms. Lane, the librarian. I'm excited to be here today and to get to work with you all. In a minute, I'll tell you about some great opportunities that we have in the library for you this year so that we can get books in your hands and keep things up and running. Oh, it's already up there. See, I love how we do this. Um, on when this is emailed to you, you can click on that link and that takes you to the library's webpage. Most of you already know how to get there. You can Google Central High School Library, but just check out all of those tabs and you can see how to join our virtual book club, how to do curbside book checkout, and a host of other things. And if you ever need me, on the front page is Ask Library Lane, so you can shoot me a message through there. Can't wait to hear from you. Guys, I'll get back on just to remind you real quick that Google Classroom is an incredibly important resource during NTI 2.0. Not only is it a place where you can get announcements from your assistant principals and counselors, you've got a page for that, but it's also where your teachers are going to communicate with you, post assignments, provide you materials. So if you haven't signed on to Google Classroom yet, it should have been automatic as you got put into classes, but the Google Classroom code is there at the bottom right if you need that. And this is what the page looks like if you happen to be new to Central or you can't remember from last year. Um, next, we're going to, to have Dr. King um, give a video presentation about transition readiness. So we're going to start that now. Hello, class of 2023. Uh, you have one year of high school under your belt. I hope that you have stayed safe and healthy throughout our summer break. I want to say welcome to our new 10th grade families who will be joining us as new Yellow Jackets this year. We have 28 new sophomore student families. So welcome. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. King. I am the Magnet Coordinator, and I will talk to you today about transition readiness. Uh, for high school, a student must earn a high school diploma and must meet one type of readiness uh, measure. And those fall into the categories of academic or career. In addition, for our English language learners, any student who receives English learner services must meet the criteria for English learner proficiency. Academic readiness can be determined by the indicators on the chart, the chart here that is displayed here on the screen. Uh, a student can meet academic readiness by obtaining a score that meets or exceeds one of the benchmarks displayed in sections A and B. For example, for academic readiness, if a student scores a 20 in English on the ACT and a 21 in math on the ACT, they have met academic readiness. So you need to meet uh, one benchmark from section A and one from section B. Uh, KDE, often Kentucky Department of Education, often refers to these sections as buckets. So remember, to be academic ready, you must meet one indicator from bucket A and one from bucket B. So that means that you can utilize those and use a combination of the two, as long as it's in different categories. So one category in English, one category in math, and so on and so forth. Uh, for career readiness, there are five indicators. You have the um, end of program assessment, you can earn a ballot certification for your career pathway or your magnet program. Uh, six credit hours of CTE dual college credit with a grade of C or higher or complete uh, a Kentucky Department of Education approved uh, exceptional work experience and or you could complete an approved apprenticeship program. In order to qualify to meet any of these indicators for career readiness, uh, a student must complete or have completed a specified number of courses in their CTE pathway and meet one of the career readiness benchmarks. I know that I've provided a lot of information to you in a short period of time, but I want you to relax. Uh, we will go over this again and again. You will hear it often. And uh, you can always ask your magnet teachers or any of the administrators. If you have any questions, you can come to me uh, as well about this. You are your parents. And um, you can also find the information on the Kentucky Department of Education's website. You can Google Kentucky Department of Education or go to education.ky.gov. Um, well, I look forward to see you virtually next week. And oh, I'm just hoping that we will see each other face to face real, real soon because I really miss you all. 
And so I want you to enjoy what uh, little time you have left because next week we're going to hit the ground running and we're going to go for it. I'm telling you, y'all got to go for it, sophomores. Um, and I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank, thank you. you. Sophomores, hi. So I am Julie Brown, your counselor, and I, I wanted to talk about the Parent Place slide that you're looking at next. So with Parent Place, this is all new. All the registration forms have been moved online, and it is mandatory that your parents complete the registration forms before the first day of school. Um, so please make sure that you look in the comments. There are two links. One is to a video. It's like a how-to video to walk you through everything. And the other one is actually leads you to the parent place. This is not infinite campus. Okay, so your parents do have to sign up for the parent place and all the registration forms that you would normally get during the first week of school are located online now. And that is mandatory, okay? All right. Next, I wanted to talk to you about credits. So you know that as a sophomore, you had to earn five credits in order to be promoted to a sophomore. So sophomores must earn 11 credits to be promoted to a junior status. And you have to have 22 credits to graduate, 16 to be promoted to a senior, and 22 in order to graduate. So this slide gives you more information about what is required for graduation. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to email me at julie, J-U-L-I-E, dot brown, at jefferson.kyschools.us. Thank you. Students, another thing we wanted to talk to you about today, you'll see the, the terms synchronous and asynchronous days thrown around a lot in communication from JCPS. Those are words we don't hear much, so I just wanted to explain what that means so that everyone's clear and we don't get confused. Synchronous days are your normal days of school. You see that bubble there, it says AKA regular school days. Most days that you have in TI, it'll be a synchronous day. What that'll look like is your first block or your first period Will be from 9 15 to 10 o'clock then you'll have another class from 10 15 to 11. you'll have a lunch break from 11 to 12 30 and that's also a time to check in with your teacher during their office hours third block will be 12 45 to 1 30 and then your fourth block will be 1 45 to 2 30 and then the school day's over a couple things to notice here you're not starting until 9 15 which is better than the 7 40 start time we usually have but you need to keep in mind on synchronous days, you are expected to be present during those classes at those times with your specific teacher. The next thing you need to be aware of is something called asynchronous days. Mr. Founder will switch the slide. Asynchronous days don't happen every week, but starting the week of September 14th, so that's a few weeks into school, Friday will be an asynchronous day. What that means is, Following our regular AV schedule, you will have all of your classes twice that week, but then on Friday, you don't have a specific class to attend. There is a form you're gonna to have to fill out that uh, records your attendance for asynchronous days, but those are pretty much a time for you to check in with your teachers, um, for them to make sure you're doing well, for you to take care of your mental health, to catch up on work, um, and we may have other scheduled things on asynchronous days, but they are a little bit different. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. Ms. Britt is going to come on and talk to you about that form that you have to fill out on those asynchronous days. Okay, so on the student attendance form for asynchronous days, you will select all four of your teachers from a drop-down box. Whether it be an A scheduled day or a B scheduled day, it will be indicated on the form. Uh, also on that form, that's where you can indicate if you need any academic assistance, uh, mental health assistance, or any other type of support. Again, this asynchronous day will not happen until September the 18th, so we'll be back with more information regarding that closer to that time. 
Mr. Founder is going to come up now and talk about devices. So sophomores, just talking to you about device pickup. Uh, we will use the same, first of all, everybody needs to request a device through the website jcps.me slash help. Once you request a device, whether it be a Chromebook or a hotspot, they will send that request to us and you will pick that up from school. We'll use the same uh, pattern that we used when we dropped stuff off at the end of last year. You and your parents will enter in through uh, 12th and Broadway, you'll come through the track and pull off on the inside lane of Chestnut. You will not need to get out of your car. Uh, we'll get your name and we'll get you your device. The other thing that will be picked up during that time uh, are any orchestra equipments or any band instruments. Uh, any of those instruments you can pick up during that time. And also something new, or if you are in art uh, one or art two, uh, you will also have a packet to pick up uh, from your art class. But again, that website is jcps.me slash help. And that pickup is going to be this Thursday and Friday from 9 to 2. Again, it's this Thursday and Friday from 9 to 2. And you'll pick it up in front of the school. If you have any questions or if you have any trouble trying to uh, uh, request a device, Call the school and somebody from the school will be able to kind of walk you through that. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is shay, C -H -E, dot founder at jefferson.kyschools.us. All right. Hey, sophomores. Uh, this is Mr. Green coming to you again. I want to cover a few expectations for you. Regarding NTI 2.0, it's important that you listen to me carefully because NTI 2.0 and NTI 1.0 are not the same. It's very, I saw Kiera in the chat talking about uh, is when we get back to real school. And it's important that you realize that this is as close as to real schools we're going to get uh, until we can be face to face again. I, I can't tell you how much I miss you guys, but I'll talk more about that in just a minute. I, I want to cover these expectations because it's important that you understand this as we move forward. The first one is this. You will have class four times a day, as Mr. Robertson explained, and you need to be on time to class. The next thing is this, is when you come into your Google Classroom or, or your Google Meet for your synchronous class, synchronous all together class, that's important that you mute yourself until your, your teacher asks you to unmute. Make sure that you're listening carefully. Act like you're at school. I know that you're not at school, but you need to act like you're at school because in reality, your body may not be, but the work that your teachers are going to ask you to do will resemble as though you are at school. You need to try to make sure that your video is turned on. This next one is a big one. The seniors had a lot of comments about this. No eating in class. Hey, guys, here's the thing. Nobody's going to write you a referral. Mr. Founder's not going to come to your house if you're uh, eating a bag of chips during class, okay? Nobody's going to do that. However, I want to remind you that you need to act like the, the earlier square, act like you're in school, and make sure that you're doing everything you can to carry yourself like a professional, to carry yourself like a student, to try to exemplify maturity as much as you can. This next square is also equally as important, that we use a consistent workspace for class. Some of you are very fortunate and very blessed to maybe have a dedicated space in your house where you can go to for class time. Others of you, maybe not. For some of you, it may be your bed. If you're in your bed for class, uh, it's important that your uh, surroundings are appropriate for class. Make sure that you're following the school dress code. Am I saying that you've got to uh, you know, wear a central shirt? No, I'm not saying that. However, don't come to class uh, half-dressed or uh, looking inappropriate for school. You need to, again, act like you're in school. Raise your hand. And here's the other thing, guys. Have fun. All right? Do your best and try to have fun throughout this NTI process. A lot of your teachers have prepared some fun get-to-know-you games for next week when we start back. Try to have fun as much as you can, uh, because this sort of situation that we're in demands that we not take ourselves too, too seriously, and we do continue to have fun. Moving forward here, the next thing is about our NTI expectations. Like we said earlier, you will have a daily routine of instruction that starts at 9.15. I want to jump back to something that Mr. Founder said earlier. <coughs> For some of you, you may not have, uh, there may be only one Chromebook in the house, or maybe only two Chromebooks in the house. Every child that's in your house that's, in a, that's a JCPS student needs their own device 
So if you still need a device or a hotspot, please go back to um, when this video is over. You can go back and rewatch the material that Mr. Founder said about how to request a Chromebook. The reason why everybody needs their own device is because you're going to be expected to be in class four times a day. So during those four times a day, you're going to receive synchronous or altogether instruction for 45 minutes with your teacher as though you're in class. So your first class starts at 915. You have class for 45 minutes. Then you get a break. After that, you start class back up at uh, 10, I believe it is. And then you have class for 45 minutes. And then you get an hour and a half break for lunch. Then class starts back up. And you have class for 45 minutes. You get a break. Class for 45 minutes. And then your, your, your requirement for screen time is done for the day unless you have homework. Make sure you have your camera on and follow the school dress code. And then students will have lessons twice each week with your teacher. The only time that that will change, like Mr. Uh, Robertson said, is on those asynchronous days where your teacher may ask you uh, to come in for some extra help. You may request specific help on those days. But when those asynchronous days come up, we'll explain those to you ahead of time so it doesn't catch off guard. Let's talk about participation. This is a really big difference from NTI 1.0 to NTI 2.0. In NTI 1.0, participation meant I need to check in with my teacher once per week. That's not going to be the case with NTI 2.0. With NTI 2.0, you have to check in with your teacher every day, go to class every day, make sure you're completing your work within the prescribed time frame, make sure that you're reaching out to your teacher for help or for, um, for extra help during their office hours, or asking for any missed videos that you may have missed. So participation is not the same as it was before, where it was before, back in March, we had participation once a week, now participation is every day, every class. Another big change from NTI 1.0, there will be no incompletes during NTI 2.0. If you remember that first go round, some of us got some work assigned back in March, and some of us did not turn that work in until May. That will not be acceptable now. We're back in school, at least as close to school as we can be. So when your teacher gives you work and they say it's due on Friday or maybe the following Friday, then it's due at that time. If it's not, then you'll have a zero in your grade book. All right. The other thing is this is a really big change when it comes to your grades. Grades are earned through mastery and progression. There is no engagement grade category. So think about what that means for you earning grades during NTI. You will have mastery, which are things like tests, quizzes, projects, uh, presentations, etc. Those all could be mastery grades. And then you have progression. The only way to show progression is if you're showing up to school every day. So if you come to school on the first day of school next Tuesday and one week from today, and then we don't see you for four weeks, you haven't shown much progression. So your grade in that category is going to hurt pretty bad. So it's important that you're showing up every day so that you can show progression with your work. It has to be every day. Your learning happens every single day, a little bit at a time, not in big, big chunks. So it's important that you're showing up every day. Also about mastery. Within a six week period, a four week period, you may have only one or two mastery grades. If that's the case, you have to do your best and you really will be leaning on that mass on that progression category to earn your grade. So I can't stress enough, guys, that you take coming to class every day important so that you can show progression and then be prepared for those mastery assignments when they come along. Here's the next item about expectations. If you're not participating during NTI, your teacher will reach out to you and, and your family so that we can document that we did it. We want to make sure that we're keeping track of that. First off, we want to make sure that you're okay. We want to hope that you didn't catch COVID or that nobody's sick. We want to make sure that you're all right and make sure that there's, that there's no barriers to your learning. The second step, if we can't get in touch with you still, is that a member of the communication team will reach out, provide assistance. And if we still can't get a hold to you, then somebody from our administrative team, maybe Mr. Robertson or Ms. Brown or Mr. Founder or myself, any one of our counselors or APs would reach out to you to make sure that you're doing OK, to make sure that you're not falling too far behind. We're going to have a Google document that will track all of our students missed time from synchronous learning. And this document will be monitored by teachers, communication team and administrators. Listen up, Central uh, sophomores. Central High School always has great attendance. When we're in person, we're one of the we have one of the highest attendance rates in the city. We're normally maybe second or third place at four attendance. I have no reason to think that that'll be different for NTI 2.0. So my expectation for you is that you're showing up to class every day so that you can learn as much as you can. 
I want to close out with um, something that is really important during this time. I'm giving, you've gotten a lot of information, right? Go to this link for this Chromebook. Go to this link to register online. Go to this link for Google Classroom. Um, go to this thing for your schedule. It's a lot of information. And if you're anything like me or anything like our teachers, you may be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. You might be a little bit nervous. You might be thinking, are they really going to enforce these rules? You might have a lot of questions. I don't know what you may be thinking right now, but it's important to remember that you affirm yourself throughout this time period. It is really important that you affirm yourself and also each other throughout this time period. So here's some affirmations as we move into distance learning. The best I can do is my best. The best that I can do is my best. How human of me to feel nervous about trying something new. I'll give myself the same grace that I give others. I may not be able to control the situation, but I have control over my attitude. This is only temporary. Kier, that one's for you. I saw you comment, Kier. You can't wait to get back to school. I know that a lot of you can't either, but guys, this is temporary. COVID's not going to last forever. The social distancing, masks, all this, it won't last forever. And this is temporary. And this is what we have to get through right now as a world. Is it the central problem or a this problem? It's not a U.S. problem. This is a global pandemic, but it's a temporary pandemic, and we're going to get through it. Affirm yourself that you can do difficult things. Affirm yourself that I don't have to have it all figured out to move forward. All right, don't get stuck in the paralysis of analysis and you don't think you don't know how to move forward in life. You don't know how to move forward. Keep moving forward and keep it positive. Then the last one is this. I will make mistakes. And that's OK. And that is OK. What's not OK is to make a mistake and then stay there. So, guys, in closing, every day on the announcements, you all hear me talk about being leaders of positive social change. Guys, this is the time to be a leader. This whole pandemic has taught us or shown us who are the leaders and who are the followers. Who are the people that go along with, with things? Who are the people that say, no, you know what? I'm going to be positive right now. I'm not going to be negative. I'm going to be solution oriented. And I want to encourage you that as a central yellow jacket, we want to be leaders of positive social change. So affirm each other, believe in each other, encourage one another, and man, keep working hard because there's nothing you can't do. This sophomore class is a really good group of kids. I can't wait to see you again. But in the meantime, guys, let's keep our nose down and work as hard as we can over the next few weeks until we can get back face to face. I know there's a lot of questions that you still may have. Tomorrow, I will send out another video with some unanswered questions and some more information. Keep that email accurate. Make sure that you're in touch with us so that we can stay in touch with you. I love you guys very much. I miss you, and I can't wait to see you again.